Oh, this is now the second episode of Portioning with Jason. I know it's been a really long time since I've done a cooking episode on my YouTube channel. And don't worry, guys, I will, I will be back after my cousin visit for, um, you know, Don Choje or the Mid Autumn Festival. So a little bit fun fact, the move out to Kazem is going very well. I'm actually going to go for uh, another opportunity for bonus episodes before I go to Kazemi. So if you guys love some cooking and computer science, go hit that like button and subscribe. So today we're going to do something very basic in cooking called mise en place, which is French for putting things in place. So here I have some beautifully um, thawed out shrimp. In addition, I will have the following ingredients. Eggs, tofu, chives, rice, and you guessed it because I am Chinese, a lot, a lot of ginger. So I will show you guys how to mix and floss everything before I make my Lu family's most famous egg fried rice. And do not worry, Stephen Kluwer, this is not going to cause emotional damage or, you know, Uncle Roger for you so yeah, let's make the amazing blue family styled egg fried rice. And by the way, this episode is actually sponsored by um, Wegmans. It's great stuff and it's delicious. So rather simple ingredients. We have here some sausages, which I'm going to dice and chop. Some Chinese chives, which I'm going to basically partition. Beautiful Shangqing tofu. I am a bit of a soy boy in terms of tofu, but it's good protein for you, especially if you are, you know, doing a bit of vegetarian diet or keto diet. And of course, the eggs from Wegmans. So the first thing in mise en place is you wash your hands, because not only anti-COVID, but also anti salmonella as well. So I'm gonna wash my hands. So the first thing I'm gonna do after wash my hands is gonna get the eggs rolling. So for eggs, you really want to do the following. You want to whisk it almost like you are, almost like a Babbage Tiny Whisk. No, this is not how you're supposed to whisk it, but it's like a Babbage Tiny Whisk. So you hold the chopstick in the very Chinese Asian fashion, and basically whisk the eggs like that. I'm gonna put my shrimp aside and start whisking the eggs. So you want to get some quality um, cage-free large brown eggs. If you are allergic to eggs, you can also add in some um, non-egg like dairy product as well for this thing. You can basically add anything you want for a very simple stir fry rice. So I'm gonna add in two beautiful eggs here. I'm gonna crack the eggs off camera. So here are the two lovely eggs um, that I basically cooked. They're basically um, flossed. So when I used to be in a, I guess, dating season with um, an old former friend of mine, we used to be making a lot of mise en place, like, you know, like she makes some meal, I make another meal. And honestly, it's amazing. Like 
it's like, you know, equally yoked, like people equally yoked, you get the Christian reference, you know, like, yeah, it's amazing to have this type of cooked meal for everybody. So what you do with the eggs, you grab your chopstick, you take your eggs and just whisk it like Babish style, you just tiny whisk. So you don't want to whisk too hard or the eggs will spill over and cause like an orgasm, but um, you know, it's gonna, <laughs> It's just gonna, you know, be a very nice way to whisk the eggs in general. So a little bit about what I'm gonna do for the rest of the fall. So my cousin Emo is gonna visit for, you know, a good week or so. We can have like Boston duck boats, you know, tour Boston, MIT, Harvard, you know, my alma mater, BU Northeastern. We're also gonna enjoy some solid um, kind of town stuff, you know, especially the yibin, the, the mooncake, the delicious stuff. And in general, we're just gonna have a lot of fun. Like, I really think it's time to go touch some grass. Like, COVID is pretty much more or less over. Monkeypox, you just get a vaccine and, you know, just really enjoy your life. Do, do not forget still to wear the mask though in like congested areas, like in hospitals and stuff. That's very important. So keep tiny whisking the eggs. Like, eggs. And here's about like maybe one or two minutes. You don't have to over whisk it. It's not like an emotion whisker. So actually shout out to my boy Alvin Zoe. Um, I love your arcade with anime. It's, it's I mean arcade with Alvin and anime with Alvin. Very great creative um design your channel too. So actually before when I was on Gator Season, I actually watched with my old partner on some Attack on Titan and uh, some very nice stuff as well. Great. To have my eggs finally whisk. You know when it's done, when it's like nice and sunny side up, you know, yolky and good. So because eggs do risk salmonella, I'm gonna put them aside away from the cutting board. So I'm gonna wipe clean my um, chopsticks. I'm actually gonna flip over my cutting board so I can start cutting it. Now I'm gonna adjust the camera so you can see what I'm cutting. So it goes a little bit more babish style now. So I got my, you know, shangqing tofu. I'm gonna chop it off. off here. Be very careful with this knife. Do not cut yourself. So yes, unlike, you know, Stephen Curry before he married Ayesha, I can cook. And this is a lot about computer science. It's so much like cooking. Like if you have an algorithm, a recipe, you can like make whatever you want, delicious food and results. And you also can customize it. That's why some comp side people like yours truly are fantastic cooks because they basically follow a recipe of design. I used to be terrible at cooking. I used to basically burn the bread. Like remember back in like, be you um Densmo Europe time, I basically almost burned the bread and caused like a alarm and killed the chain honors hall. But now I know better, thanks to some Burbank living in Boston and um, just being in general really good, careful with my stuff. So Shanti Dove is a little bit tough to cut with the knife. So I'm gonna grab a smaller knife to not cut my hand. This is a good knife to cut tofu bags with because it's very, very like sharp and very, very easy to um, poke through that plastic. Sometimes this will take a little bit of effort, so be patient, but eventually you'll get the tofu out. So what I predict for the Boston Celtics um, 2023, NBA Finals, and they'll win it all. I think with um, Brogdon and with Dal Gallinari, they have a good shot to um, win the NBA Finals. And what I tell you guys, I got the dough to open easily. You know, chef's kiss, easily. So I get two pieces of very solid Shangqing tofu. And the tofu curd has a little bit of um, runny water, so just drain it in the sink. To be sustainable, whatever tofu you don't use, you wrap it with a Ziploc bag. So 
like probably almost five years ago, we had the first ever portioning episode with Jason. I used a Ziploc bag to basically add in some beef, jus, and sandwiches. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with my tofu here. And since we're making a bit of a stir fry, I want to sort of make small chunks. So I'm gonna first bisect the tofu lengthwise. So I'm gonna chuck this into strips. Don't do it too fancy, just chop into regular strips. And each strip I'm gonna chop into smaller pieces. So it's like mini cube essentially. So this is what I call xiao ding or mini cube tofu. So like my man Maggie Chan would say, you know, it's very delicious and very nutritious actually. Good protein, good source of um, zinc actually for tofu. So if you're low on zinc, you want to get them, you know, protein gains and don't want to eat too much meat, tofu is your answer. It tastes much better than tempeh, as you can tell. I had horrible experience at BU eating tempeh, not recommended. Northeastern tempeh was a little bit better, actually. It was a tastier. Or seitan as well. Here's some easily, you know, life code trick. You can cut them all in a batch, just like computer science batch file. There you go. Boom. That's all the tofu. So we're going to set the tofu aside because it's time now to bring out the shrimp. The shrimp is super important to get right because sometimes the shrimp monger forgets, you know, that ugh, ugly, you know, vein. Very ushing, very disgusting. So you want to make sure, you want to make sure the shrimp is good. So let me take a piece of shrimp here. So you can see some, some parts of the vein is still un, uncut here. So I'm going to use a small knife to basically devein the shrimp. So I'm gonna just put the tofu in a safe container and wash my hands and touch wash shrimp. Yes, if you're allergic to shrimp and eggs in this episode, um, you could substitute with some tempeh or some, uh, you know, vegetarian stuff or even just beans. Heck, make it a, you know, Tex-Mex Chinese mixer. I'm down for that. You know, delicioso, I'm, I'm down for that. So let's do it. Yeah, sorry for the noise. I was trying to get some plates. So I'm gonna put my cubed tofu here. And don't worry, I'm gonna add in a little more space for now my soon to be diced sausages for mise en place. So guess how long it should take a master chef, regardless Canada, US or Australia or whatever show you watch for cooking? 10 minutes. I'm doing this in pretty much double that time. Yes, my boy Nick DeGiovanni could actually do this thing in five minutes. I challenge you, Nick. You know, Miss and Paws challenge versus Mandy. Whoever wins gets a free Tesla. So my boy Nick DeGiovanni is doing an amazing job with his YouTube channel, and hopefully he um, inspires young, you know, millennial and Gen Z to cook and do great things for themselves. So now the shrimp. Shrimp, of course, is a little bit slimy, a little bit, a little bit yucky. So you're gonna actually have to protect your hands a little bit. I like to use gloves when it comes to shrimp. They don't only protect you from COVID potentially from shrimp, but also keeps your hands safe. So you take your shrimp, you rinse it out off camera.
So you notice when you rinse shrimp, you have something like this going on, right? That is what you want to peel off. You don't want people in your dining or your dating or engagement shrimp party or cocktail to be having shells, to be kicked out of a party. So let me quickly demonstrate how to peel the shrimp. And I'm gonna use a piece of paper towel here to protect my board. So how you peel a shrimp. So first you look at the head of the shrimp. You peel it lengthwise around the entire body. You make sure you discard every piece of peel or you're gonna have trouble. One of my most favorite shrimp dishes in Chinese culture and reason why I almost risk triglycerides is shrimp pancakes or, you know, shabbing. Those things are delicious, but they can cause you cholesterol problems. So I'm trying to be a little more healthy by not eating so much. And to be sanitary, get the shells in another plastic trash bag. This one's a little bit too big, but it's good enough. Oh, this is a small one. Awesome. So you want to check if the shrimp has been deveined. You grab your little knife and you make a little incision on top of the shrimp. I got pretty lucky here. This one. Kudos, fuyo to the shrimp monger. It's been deveined. JK, all of them have been deveined. So I love what I love about Wegmans, you know, like the shrimp quality gets deveined and things are looking good. So I'm gonna do all the shrimp off camera. I'm gonna quickly go into the sausages and the chives and that'll be it for the episode.
Uh oh, you can see over here. There is a bad vein. So you take your knife, basically you scoop out the vein like this. Not for a squinch. So the shrimp have been shelled and deveined, and this guy's shrimp game is pretty on point, not very mid. Out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yay, Boston Celtics. Out of 17 um, shrimp, which I'm going to use. Oh, that's my parents DMing me soon. Um, anyways, of 17 shrimp, we're going to now pat them all dry before we chop them up. And shrimp, we don't use the vegetable knife. We use a much more foamy or, you know, very, I would say, potent knife. To use this paper technique to keep the shrimp dry so it doesn't get too wet in the stir fry, and also to get some moisture off the shrimp. So now the glove does not yet come off. Because these shrimp are rather simple to chop, I'm going to use actually my small, small knife to do it instead. It was like a much bigger, you know, like tiger prawn or big shrimp or even, you know, <laughs> like a, you know what, like, like a frog on Pokemon, you know, big crustacean, I'd probably use this big choppy knife. Especially in Boston, where they have like a lot of lobsters, a lot of like shellfish. But for this, you just portion the shrimp into four pieces. So look at how I portioned this little shrimp. I'm gonna put all his buddies aside and put this one on the chopping block. So I basically quad sected the shrimp into four. As you could tell, there's some, yeah, I guess nerve, brain, I don't know, some ugly pieces out there. So make sure you always clean your shrimp before you cook them, or you will be regretting that badly. So you have another plate to keep your track of your shrimp, which is very important. I'm gonna keep all cleaned pieces here. While I process the shrimp, let me talk about something I truly wanna talk about that's also related to algorithm 10, season nine, 
um, episode three. I mean, season three, episode nine. There was a brain fart. <laughs> um, I normally didn't feel like I was going to get through my masters, unlike my boy Shizaj and quite a few Northeastern Huskies, whom are having quite a trouble time to time with algorithms. If you look at any Reddit. Um, but I did know that um, I was going to get through my masters at least with you know, decent grades. I was not expecting cum laude honors uh, GPA though. That was pretty impressive, I have to say. Not to toot my own horn, but I wasn't exactly expecting honors during a pandemic. So that was pretty interesting. The first thing I noticed about things like this um, with the academics is that they make things very tough for you to be yourself. Like you have to take three really challenging core courses in programming design paradigm, um, which was basically graduate fundies. Not as hard as fundies, just as you know, coding tedious. I basically had like more more work in PDP than in my co-op at you know BCH and my internship at Custom Floors. And of course, even at Dell and Optum, at least it was just farming by Friday because I have no meetings. But Wednesday, you know, the rest of the week was absolute coding grindhouse. So regards to workload, I would really, um, you know, sometimes have, you know, signs of like anxiety, depression, mental health issues. I was going to UHCS about like maybe three times a week at the beginning of Northeast. I was also commuting from home as well till I got my apartment in Burbank in Boston. As you know, right now, Boston is hella expensive. That's the reason why I'm moving over to the old Sunshine State. And actually some of my um, cousins recommended that, including my man Yingluo, who's coming over next week. Furthermore, I think it's just really important to be yourself and like, you know, be okay with bad grades. Like even failing is okay. I had retake algorithms myself. I got like an A in the re retake. And that's why I'm doing algos in 10 now to show you guys that algorithms is not that scary. Just like the shrimp innards and all this yucky stuff. Once you take the yucky dynamic programming, the lead code, Fortnite like grind, and just four to five hundred dollars travel away, it's actually quite pleasant. You solve a problem and you think, wow, how did Dijkstra or you know, like um Knuth or those OG go to computer science people or even Lady Ada Lovelace come up with this type of stuff in those younger years of computer science? Just like my man Michael Dell, you know, like you win together by solving problems. And that's what makes computer science such a unique field in STEM is that you have, you know, amazing opportunities, not just only for money, but for growth and advancement in your career, amazing opportunities. So if you like math, you like computers, you like Fortnite, you like, you know, you like gaming and stuff, and you love making things, you know, after grinding hard, you know, running away from the grind, you can do computer science as a career. However, if you don't like math and those things, you think about the nerdy or boring or misogynistic or whatever Reddit says about computer science, I recommend you not to do that as a major because it will consume your life. I was lucky to even keep a partner given the workload I had in this pandemic. So I'm really happy to be touching some grass in the Kissimmee area, you know, just being myself and enjoying coding endurance be a lot easier than before. And I'm actually going to try to go for the Kube certification so for CKD. So wish your man best of luck as he takes it because it's a hard cert, it's not easy. It's like a GRE of like Kubernetes. So I keep on me some passing these shrimp and yapping about computer science. So let me ask you guys in the comments, what's your favorite subject in school and what's your least favorite subject in school? And what would you recommend telling a kid who's about to start school during COVID pandemic? What is like the best way to succeed? And also, what's your favorite sports? I wish the Boston Red Sox were doing okay this year. They're not. They're playing spoiler against the Tampa Bay Rays, which ironically is the team next to Kasemi. So I got a little bit of a Boston sports, you know, adjacent fandom problem going on here. But I know very quickly that Tampa Bay is very, um, you know, very nice to other fans and different teams. And even if you're a Yankees or Sox fan, as long as you, you know, don't antagonize them, don't, you know, attack them like the Houston Astros fans did in 2017 to L.A., I think you'll be fine. I think, like, here's the thing I know about social media. 
it's sort of like the mala version of real life. It's a much more spicier, much more hot take, dramatic version of real life. Real life is not that dramatic. Like not everybody's gonna go crazy with, you know, things from the Russia and the Ukraine stuff. Nobody's gonna really think, you know, geopolitics could cause that much trouble. And if you're a Christian, don't read Revelation in a way that <laughs> Stephen A. Smith, you know, reads ESPN. Don't go crazy. Don't go wild in over those type of, you know, biblical stuff. You know, just really learn to enjoy your life and be yourselves. It's like pulling out the brains of each shrimp, you know, it's just like get rid of these nasty things out of your mind, really. So yeah, I think that's about it for the shrimp and I'm almost done with the harder. This is the hardest part actually. If you can get through the shrimp, the rest of this episode is gonna be a joke. This is like the actual challenging part of the episode. It's just getting through the innards of a shrimp and not getting grossed out before two months before Halloween basically. Yeah, I will not be making a Halloween episode for cooking because I'll be in Kissimmee by then. But I will have Algos in 10 for my boy Miles Morales across the Spider-Verse. Finally, the disgusting shrimp part is done. I can actually now unuse the gloves. So we got the messy and rather ugly part out of the way. We can finally now use the other knife and do some more, shall we say, appropriately clean chopping. So I got myself some lovely sausages. Um, they're not andouille or, you know, pancetta. They are just regular old kielbasa sausages. I'm supposed to plop them on the countertop like that. Yeah, there's some bits of carrots and peas. I was making basically stir fry last night as well. You know, just family stuff, really. And my mom taught me a great trick to chop sausages. Just a computer science stack, you know? You stack them up, like four at a time. Then you bisect them. Then you chop them up. And look at that. That's how quick it is to chop sausages if you are a pro. Then put them next to the tofu plate. Because of course you want to make some plots without wasting space. Just stack them up sausages like you know a poker chip. Oh, if it's too high, just stack them up as two. I don't know, just you do you really. And then put the sausages in the plate again. So sausages do have a little bit of triglycerides, so I don't eat them too much. But for this episode, I will make an exception. Oh yeah, speaking of triglycerides, my birthday cake actually ironically defeated my um health plan. I was trying to go healthy as possible during the summer, basically going on almost like a keto-like diet. Even in like Boston, I was playing like Frisbee with my church group and everything. I wasn't eating too much, you know, like, you know, tasty burger or Hefe's or Amelia's or even, or even just good old Blaze pizza. I was just eating more healthier stuff. Like I was eating more, you know, sort of vegan, sort of not really vegetarian diets eating a lot of pokey, you know, like just a lot of non-fatty, non-triglycerides, I mean, triglyceride meats, like chicken and fish were very popular. I basically avoid even Popeye's tendies, you know, like I thought my tendies were, were great for like, you know, good BF points and good, you know, like, you know, 4 chan Reddit, you know, social media points, but in real life, they kill your health, man. Like the one thing I want Northeastern to do away with is too much Popeye's. Like, unpopular opinion. Popeyes is good, but it will kill your health by the time you graduate. Like, raising canes at BU, no offense, is better because they don't have that much triglycerides in their chicken. One thing you cannot skimp on, though, at Northeastern is Pokey Station fish. That is delicious. Like, the sushi is out of this world good. It's so good that it makes Salt Bay look bad. Like, Salt Bay is just too expensive, too conniving of a chef. I agree with you, Nick, on that one. Salt Bay is a fun. Like a straight up $1,500, you know, idolatry fraud. So Salt Bay rand aside, I'm gonna wrap up this episode with my chives. Of course, as they say in kindergarten, clean up, clean up, everybody clean up, you gotta clean up, so. 
make sure y'all clean up because if you don't, you're gonna be in trouble with your parents. So some are coming actually in 10 minutes right now. So I gotta, I gotta wrap this thing up quickly. <laughs> but here are the charts. You don't need to do too much. Just gotta, you know, pick a few stragglers. Like I generally like to do around two or three pieces per meal. Wrap the rest of them back in the bag so they don't go bad. And you can buy them in Boston area, like you know, Zhongguotaoshi, <clears throat> you know, H Mart, um, C Mart. Heck, I bought these from Wegman for like three dollars a pound. Solid pricing. So you wash your chives, you grab the, the skin of the chives, you peel them up because the skin is not very delicious and it's actually quite gummy. And it's actually quite poisonous if you don't wash it correctly. Then you look at the root of the chive and you chop that up. You don't take any root. Root is not good for you. Then for the chive, you chop it up like this. You put your knuckle against the blade, not this where you chop your hand, but you put your knuckle against the blade and just use your knuckle to do the work. That's how I learned from Gordon Ramsay, is to like chop the chives with precision. If it gets a little hard, just chop a little bit tougher. They get a little bit slippery, the chives, so bear with me. So again, you take chive, you take the outer skin off because it's not very good for you. And if you look at the top, you just behead it off with its head. And speaking of medieval stuff, uh, House of the Dragons, amazing, amazing Game of Thrones spin-off. I'm not going to spo spoil anything too much, but I like, um, you know, how Malkin used music close to the book Fire of Blood. Very amazing. <clears throat> I don't like to watch too many HBO shows because they are a little bit sappy, but I do like Game of Thrones, and I do like, you know, good old BU Northeastern pastimes. So every time I do a little bit of, you know, HBO and chill with my old partner and with some of my Northeastern BU friends, we'd often go to like two in the morning, you know, just enjoying life. And, well, enjoying life. And there you have it, bros and girls. You have yourself the most amazing Miss Unplus feet, Jason, Lou, and the Lou family. So you got here sausage, chives, and tofu. Miss Impossible shrimps, and of course, the amazing eggs right here. So there you have it. There is your Miss Plus portioning with Jason episode. Two. Once I make a semi, I'll show you guys how to make pokey in episode three. Like and subscribe, and see you guys then. Bye bye.